you share the work with the characters. Mm -hmm. So the characters aren't alien, aren't over there, they're, they're with you. So you, I think you can create a very honest um, relationship with the characters in that moment. What are you capable of? Download the app and start earning money. Thanks for taking an interview with Zucascopy TV. So we know that in 2002, there was a debate of Sleep No More in London already. How was that? It was a much smaller Sleep No More than the one that we see here in Shanghai. It was just for 10 performers um, and it was in an, an old Victorian boys school um, just with only 40 audience. So much, much more stripped down and much, much less story and characters. But it was our first collaboration, Felix and I, um, and it was, it was exciting. In Sleep No More, what kind of Macbeth that you want to reveal to the public? Oh, um, in Sleep No More, the Macbeth we would like to reveal I think is a character that is complicated I think it's a character that has great drive and ambition mm -hmm. but also has a fragility and a vul vulnerability I think in this in this work as with the original play we see a character that is in a place of struggle um, and in a place of of torment uh, I've seen some comments in some newspaper or media. One of them said that uh, Macbeth is actually turned inside out. Mm. Do you think you turned him inside out? I think that's a really great way of describing that. Yes, because I think we want to see his inside, you know, his inner story, his inner inner torment. And we we in this work, we see that we don't just hear it we can see it we can see it so we see him with blood on his hands we see him turned upside down by the world and by the environment actually in the show we literally see him upside down on his head um so i think yes that's a that's a good way of describing Macbeth. we know that in in this sleep no more there are not only Macbeth story but also other small storylines mm. so how can you connect them so mm. that it won't look that odd mm. um i think i mean there are there are there are many big stories actually i mean macbeth is the story around which everything else falls but many of the characters have still quite big stories i mean i think everything comes from that original pretty much from that original play um, either directly from the play or um, us using our imagination to imagine what happens outside the pages of the play. So, for example, Lady Macduff, in the play we only meet her, she has two or three scenes mm -hmm. that's a, in a conventional play. But in this work, we really see her as a fully rounded character. So... We, we can imagine what she's doing when she isn't doing the scene. So everything ties back, whether it's, it's imagining more what those characters would, were doing, or it's like all of the characters in town have links to um, the, soup, the, 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 the underworld of the show and the underworld of the story. Um, so everything sort of ties in. We, I think we, we all, we feel that all of the characters are from the same time, mm -hmm. and they're in the same place. So it, it, it should feel like the characters live and inhabit in the space. So it's actually the space, the world of the, of the McKinnon that brings all of the characters together. As I mentioned before, there are some short interactions mm. which I've, I've already did with Macdoff. Yes. <laughs> so uh, what is the significance of it or what's the purpose of it? So we call these short interactions one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. and they're very meticulous choreographed scenes between 
one character and one audience. They, we think of them as like little gifts mm -hmm. um, in which the audience has a very um, a pri privileged or special um, Feelings. feeling or en uh, engagement. It's where this, the audience can learn something about this character mm -hmm. that's very specific that might give them different take on the story or might allow the audience to experience the wor this world or see the world in a different way. Um, they're very, they're quite delicate I think and they're quite precious. If I want to uh, maximize the numbers to get this mm -hmm. short interaction, what, what should I do? Well, do you I shouldn't mean? really, uh, you shouldn't do. You shouldn't. Should, no, because I think sometimes it can be, it can, it can, it can be a shame in this work if all an audience wants to do is find the find the one on one, yeah. because they should be like accidents. Um, you walk That's around nice. a corner, you follow a character, the character catches your eye, they take your hand, and then you have this moment, and then it's special and a surprise. I think if you're chasing after them. It's it, it, it's harder, and <laughs> too then you, aggressive. it's too aggressive, and then sometimes you don't, you won't receive it, so then it's a disappointment. So I think it's much better to just be present in the world, and 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 then I think it it um it will happen. When these characters doing doing this show during the show, is it hard for them to avoid the touch with the audience, or you know they will maybe disturb them? I mean, we the dancers and the performers in this show are very skilled. Mm -hmm. um, so we talk, always talk. We we practice the idea of having audience everywhere. You know, con traditional theatre, audience sits here and um, performance is there. So there's this distance. In this world, they're every they're everywhere. So we we practice being sensitive to that. We do lots of work with our eyes closed, so we can imagine. So we become more sensitive. Um, and I think the performers become very skilled in changing their their reaction. Um, that said, it's interesting in Shanghai the audience is very keen and sometimes are really close. Yes. Um, and sometimes that's that's hard. That's harder for the for the performer because actually sometimes the scene needs just some distance and some space. But they find ways to um, to adapt. Um, Sometimes we change the choreography mm -hmm. to actually physically suggest the audience make some more space. And sometimes I've, audiences are very sensitive and they give space and sometimes they get excited and that's, the, that's the, a little bit the nature of the show, I think. Do you think Sleep No More can somehow um, reveal the voyeuristic element to the public? I think Sleep No More can be super voyeuristic because just because the audience can wear a mask and the mask is a kind of protection. Mm -hmm. So we become anonymous with the mask and therefore it gives the audience a kind of freedom to look. And voyeurism, voyeurism is, is, is a process of looking, it's a process of watching. The theatre, traditional theatre is very voyeuristic because we sit in the dark and we watch cinema, we sit in the dark and we watch um, this work is perhaps has a, has layers of voyeurism. We see, we we can look, but we can also s watch people looking, yeah. um, which it, yeah, can feel quite odd and quite strange. Yes, when we see a lot of people with white masks, and yeah. standing in line, and you know, so we see people making a choice. We're making a decision to watch something. Um, Whereas in conventional theatre, we don't have that choice. So, yes, it's a, it, it is voyeuristic. How did you get inspired of the choreograph in drama? I like stories. Mm -hmm. I did English literature um, as part of my training, actually. And I I've, I've always been interested in creating movement or dancing that tells a story and that has some link to character. Also I like choreography that connects to emotion and says something about um, 
how it is to be human. Um, how will you choose actor and actress? Um, so mainly we work with majority of dancers mm -hmm. in the company um, who can act and we do extensive auditions so we do workshops which normally last a couple of days we see how they can dance and move and then we often teach them some choreography from the show and then we also see how they are like how creative they are um, how charismatic how much energy they have there is a frame or a clip in i think the last part of the show that everyone is sitting near a very long table uh -huh. and it yeah. is kind of slow motion yeah. they're doing could you tell us more about it because people said that it actually imitates the film technology yeah, so it comes from the play. There's a banquet scene in the play where Macbeth is very is going mad essentially, and he sees he sees ghosts and he sees the ghost of Banquo. So, actually, way back in 2003, when we created the first work, I was thinking about how to do that without any words, how to do that scene. And there's a very famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci called The Last Supper. Oh, yeah. It's a very famous, iconic painting in um, Christian and Catholic culture and religion shows the Christ figure being, Jesus Christ being betrayed. So it felt like an interesting reference point for mm -hmm. the story. So we took the painting, which is this long tableau, and we created these images from the tableau in stillness. And then we moved between different tableaus very slowly to create this idea. But it's interesting. It takes a lot of um, rehearsal and practice to, to, to have a sense. It is like a moving painting. That's our idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, what makes an epic experimental theatre experience like Sleep No More differ from a traditional theatre experience? Lots of things. I mean, the main difference is the is what we call the removal of the fourth wall. Mm. So, so you are, you know, you are having to stand. The audience has to stand. They have to move around the space. The scale of the show is epic, as you said, over many floors. Um, so, we have many opportunities in a work like this to um, attack the audience with images and pictures. Um, this work is often described as immersive because the audience are in it and it happens all around them. So you share the work with the characters. Mm -hmm. So the characters aren't alien, aren't over there, they're, they're with you. So you, I think you can create a very honest um, relationship with the characters in that moment. I think the world is saturated with light and sound it's quite overwhelming um, and I think all of the the accumulation of all of these things has can have this quite grand impact mm -hmm.